Oh, hey YouTube. Here we are in the bathroom. And I thought I'd give an overview of our shower. This has been a long time in the making. I don't know why. I guess it's a pain to clean it up. So I've gone and made that effort and cleaned it up for you. I didn't clean up this cupboard up here. Uh, yeah, you just have to live with uh, that mess. This is van life, people. So, what are the key features of the shower? First of all, you'll notice it takes up no space. This is the entrance way. Down the bottom here, we've got a shower tray. This being made so it's flush with the floor. So you can walk over it quite easily and you won't trip up. Underneath this tray is a stainless steel shower tray with a drain in the corner. And that drain feeds into the grey tank underneath the van. In behind my shower curtain here, you can see I've got my uh, mixer and a little holder for my soap and my shampoo. One of the complaints I uh, got is the fact you have to set up the shower every night. So yeah, that's a slight downside. The advantage though is you don't have the shower taking up a whole shower cubicles worth of space. And considering you only shower for two or three minutes a day, if you're lucky, depending how much hot water you've got, uh, there's no point taking up that much space all the time. So let's have a look how we put the shower together and we will time it and see how long it takes. That's it, shower's ready to use. Ta-da! Oh, the only other thing I do is put the fan on up the top here. Here's the pack down. And we're done. Now, after a shower, the curtain is wet, so I just leave that drip drying right where it is, and that's not a problem. The shower curtain here is made out of two bath size shower curtains, uh, which gives us enough room to overlap them, and that way we have a nice entrance here. And on the inside here, you can see we can access all of the other shower items here. So this is how much room we've got. Look at this, almost a full arm's length. And this is the advantage of having a shower in here like this, is we can uh, put these hooks right up around the corners and it gives us heaps of room. They stretch out enough that the vent works here. Someone asked if I have a problem with uh, curtain suck. And we all know that's the worst thing in the world, especially if it's cold and horrible. And because this is so wide and the shower tray itself is quite big, uh, the curtain's miles away, so you don't get any curtain being sucked up onto you. These rubber holders for the uh, toiletries are amazing. I initially had a, a metal basket here, but every time I come up and down the steps here, it's quite easy to bump it. And these are, of course, flexible enough, it doesn't matter. Here's an alternative shower arrangement. Have the door open and enjoy nature. This mat here is uh, actually made out of cedar. Now, probably teak would be a better uh, option for this particular job. They make uh, boat decks out of teak, so it would cope with water very happily. You can shower on top of this with this in place. It'll handle water quite happily. However, it's really nice to have a dry floor. By removing the tray first, and I just stand it up off to the side there, you then shower in here, you get a bit more height, which is handy because the, the roof here curves down a bit. So I get a little more headroom, but also this will be all wet when you finish showering and then you can just put the tray back in and you've immediately got a dry floor again that you can actually walk on with your socks. So that's a really nice feature of having a removable shower tray. The only downside of having the shower in the doorway here is this does become your doormat 
and it means you get a lot of dust and dirt and debris dragged in. If... So one big advantage of this uh, style mixer is I can set the temperature to what I want and then I can turn it on and off really easily by lifting it up and down and not changing the temperature. So if you want to do a military shower, get your temperature right, have the water going out, push it in to turn it off, soap up, pull it back out and it'll be exactly the same temperature you left it. So this is my little shower wall that I install. It's just made out of uh, corrugated display board stuff. Very cheap, waterproof, easy to clean, wipe down. And the purpose of this is just to give somewhere for the shower curtain to sit inside. This system works surprisingly well. I do not end up with a single drip outside of the shower. The shower area also doubles as somewhere to store my toilet. So you can pull your toilet out and use it in the shower area. If you uh, want to or need to, you can use the shower curtain as a privacy screen uh, for when using the toilet. So I've been using a shower setup now for over a year, almost every single day. Would I change anything? Don't think so. I often get the question if I have a problem with moisture in the van, but no, what I usually do is turn on the big exhaust fan at the other end and have that blowing air in. Have this one here sucking air out. And on a really cold, steamy day, uh, I'll often open the window as well and have that air going out as well. So are there any downsides to the setup? One, the amount of dirt that you collect because it's your uh, entrance mat. You can counteract that by putting another mat out the door before you come into the van. That's quite handy. It's quite nice that you can come in with muddy, dirty boots into your shower area. You could even rinse them off in the shower area. Um, the only other downside is the placement of the mixer here. It's very easy to, say, for example, be carrying a duvet and bedding and things. Come up the stairs here, accidentally bump it with the bedding and then turn the shower on and hose you down while you're carrying all your bedding. It's hilarious. So it'd be quite nice if that was a bit higher. Ideally, we'd have more than one drain in the corner. Because the drain's in the corner, I have to make sure that I park the van sloping this direction. And it's usually relatively easy to do because all roads in New Zealand slope that direction, driver's sides there. Now, it's not the end of the world if you're not quite level. It just means your shower tray builds up with water till it hits the drain, then it drains, and then you end up with a big pile of water in there you need to get rid of somehow. And you can use a squeegee or something to uh, get it down the drain hole. Ideally, you'd have four drain holes, one in each corner. In my case, I've got a fuel tank underneath here, so I couldn't put one here or here. The grey water tank's underneath this corner, so that was actually the only place I could put a drain hole, and it's worked pretty well. All right, let's have a look at the pressure that comes out of this shower. So that's full pressure there. I tend to not use it on full pressure. Instead, I'll usually use it about one third pressure, which gives you a much longer shower. And because it's nice and hot, you still get a really good shower, even when it's only half pressure. If it's on full pressure, the shower will last about three and a half minutes. So if you want double the length of shower, you need to have the amount of water going out. So just some uh, specs on the shower. My cold water tank is about 100 litres. And that will generally get me four decent showers out of uh, that tank, including other use like washing dishes and things. Uh, the hot water tank is 25 litres, and it can be heated by solar or diesel. Uh, so in summer, I often use the solar power to heat it up, especially when my batteries are full. In winter, there's not enough solar power, so I have to use a diesel heater. And it takes about 20 minutes to heat up a 25 litre tank. And that 25 litre tank will get you a really hot shower at full pressure for three and a half minutes. If you want a longer shower, like five minutes, just put that pressure down a bit. One more downside of this setup is this works really well if you're in the van by yourself. If you have got a friend staying over and you're not comfortable enough to get completely naked with them, then it gets a little tricky. Also, because we don't have uh, solid walls, uh, the toilet situation is not very private either. So it depends who you're staying with in the van as to whether this setup will work for you. If uh, you're a couple and you're both comfortable with each other, a curtain is all you need. If you're not, you might want to think about building a proper cubicle in the van. And also you might want to think about resale value as well. If you come to resell this later, 
this design may put some people off buying the van, whereas I don't think anyone would really be put off by having a shower cubicle. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little tour of my shower. As you can see, there's a lot of details to think about. I just hope this proves useful if you're building your own van, and I say it's worth the effort. It's so nice being able to have a hot shower anytime, anywhere, as long as you've got the water for it. All right, catch you next time.